So today we're going to be looking at a very common interview problem called valid parentheses. Uh, this can be found on lead code. So the problem description is as follows. Uh, you're given a string composed of these six characters. So these characters come from these three pairs of different parentheses. And you're asked if the given string is valid. So a valid string composed of these characters is one in which every open uh, bracket is closed with the corresponding closed bracket, and the brackets are also closed in the correct order. As a first example, this here is an example of a valid string, because this first open round bracket is closed by a closed round bracket. Okay, So the brackets types match, and uh, therefore this is a valid string. Now this is also a valid string, now, this is an example of an invalid string, okay? So you have an open round bracket, and even though there is a closed bracket here, it is not the closed bracket of the correct type because in order to close this round bracket, we also uh, want a closed round bracket, okay? This is another example of an invalid string, okay? So we open with a round bracket and a square bracket, and even though their corresponding closed brackets are present, uh, they're in the wrong order because we last opened with a square bracket. So therefore, we should close the square bracket first before closing the round bracket. Okay, So this is in the wrong order and therefore it's invalid. So the way that we can think about this problem is that we can scan the string from left to right and realize that we can always open a bracket. Okay, There's no problem with that. But we cannot always close a bracket. Okay, because the closure of a bracket requires a corresponding open bracket of the correct type. So this type of problem is perfect for the data structure called the stack. So the stack is this data structure where you can push elements on top and pop elements off. The last element that you pushed on would be the first one to come off. Okay, So we can use such a stack to keep track of the current open brackets that have not yet been closed as we uh, go through the characters of s from left to right. And the stack will keep track of these uh, yet to be closed open brackets in order from the bottom to the top as we go from left to right in s. So for instance, if the top of the stack had this open uh, round bracket and we encounter a closed square bracket, as the current act character in S, then we know that uh, this string cannot be valid because this open round bracket ought to be the first one to be closed. And if the type of the closed bracket that we encounter do not match, then there's no way that we can uh, close this open round bracket in the right order. Now, if we do encounter the closed bracket of the right type, in this case, a uh, round closed bracket, then we can use this closed bracket to close this, uh, this round open bracket. And in that case, we can then pop this open round bracket off the stack because it has now been closed. And then we move on to examining the next open bracket in the stack, whatever that is. So here is the pseudocode. Um, so we initialize an empty stack, and this is going to keep track of the uh, current open brackets that have not yet been closed. And then we loop through all the characters in S. If the character is an open bracket, so we just open that bracket and push it onto the stack. Now, if the character is a closed bracket, however, then we have to do some checking. So what we do is we look at the last bracket on the very top of the stack. This is the last bracket that has been opened, and therefore it is the first one that we need to close. Okay, And if this open bracket is not of the matching type with this current character, then we know that we cannot close these brackets in the correct order. And in that case, we can immediately return false. Okay? If the function still not has returned, then we know that every single closed bracket has found a partner. Right? A, a corresponding open bracket. But that doesn't mean that the string is valid. 
because at the end, it could be the case that the stack is still non-empty, right? So if the stack is not empty, that means that there are there still are open brackets that have not yet found a closed bracket. And in that case, the string is still invalid. So there's one last condition that we have to check. Namely, after all of this is done, we have to check that the, the stack is empty. So there's no more open brackets left to close. Okay, so let's run through some concrete examples. So in this case, we initially start with an empty stack, okay? And we look at this first character, which is a round open bracket. There's nothing on the stack, right? And this is an open bracket, so we can push this open bracket onto the stack. So we're now, the stack now looks like this. We now look at the next character, which is a closed square bracket, okay? So looking at the closed square bracket, because it's a closed bracket, we check then the top element on the stack, which is this round open bracket. And we notice that these two brackets are not of the same type. Okay, so therefore we can immediately know that we cannot close these brackets in the correct order. We can just immediately return false. Okay, so now let's look at this example. So initially our stack is empty and we start with this curly open bracket, right? Uh, there's nothing on the stack. We can open this bracket. So right now we can just push this on the stack and our stack now looks like this. So now we go to the next character. And the next character is an open bracket, right? Uh, once again, we're allowed to open brackets, so we can now push this open bracket on the stack. Okay, so now we go on to the next character and we see a closed round bracket. Because this is a closed bracket, we gotta look at the last, the topmost element on the stack, and we see that it is of the same type of brackets as this, okay? So that's a good thing. So we can pop this element off the stack because we can use this closed round bracket to close this open one. And now our stack is just left with this uh, open curly bracket. And finally, we move on to this last character, which is a closed curly bracket. And we look at the topmost element on the stack and we see that it is the, of the correct type of bracket. So therefore we pop this element off of the stack and now our stack is empty. And here we have reached the end of the string, so there's one last condition to check, namely that the stack is empty, meaning that there's no more open brackets left to close, and indeed that is the case. So in this case, we return true. Okay, so here's the code. Um, so we start by initializing this empty stack, keeping track of all the current open brackets that have not yet been closed, and we define this list called op, uh, which contains the list of all the types of open brackets. Now here I've defined a map, and the reason why I did this will be apparent later, mapping each of the closed brackets to its corresponding open bracket, okay? So we start by looping through all the characters in S, and if the character is an open bracket, then we can open that bracket and we can just push that character onto the stack. Otherwise, that character is a closed bracket. So if the character is a closed bracket, then we need to check several things. First of all, if the stack is empty, that means there currently are no open brackets left to close. Right? So if there are no current brackets left to close and we're still trying to close something, then obviously the string is not valid. So in this case, we can return false immediately. If the stack is not empty, but the, the open bracket corresponding to that closed bracket. So now you can see why I've defined this map, right? So this character is a um, closed bracket and this map finds the corresponding open bracket to that closed bracket, okay? So if the corresponding open bracket is not the same as the open bracket on the top of the stack, then we know that we cannot close these brackets in the correct order. And in that case, we also return false. So if the function has not returned at this line, then we know two things. First of all, the stack is not empty. And second, open bracket on the top of the stack is of the correct type, okay? So in that case, we can just pop off that open bracket. 
because it has now been closed. And by the time this entire loop finishes, once again, we got to check this one last condition, whether the stack is empty, to ensure that there are no more open brackets left to close. And if that's the case, then we return true, and this is a valid string. All right, so let's run this. And there we go. Uh, the time complexity of this is, of course, on, because for each character in S, we perform only O1 operations. Again, push, pushing to a stack is O1. Checking these things is also O1. And popping from a stack is also O1. Right? So in total, this has a time complexity of ON and a space complexity of also ON because the stack can grow to a size on the order of the size of the S. Okay, so that's it for today. Um, I'll see you guys next time.